hello students so in this video we will see the lumbar vertebra so as we know that there are five lumbar vertebrae starting from l1 to l5 out of this the upper four lumbar vertebrae they are typical lumbar vertebrae while the fifth one that is l5 has got some atypical features that why it is known as atypical lumbar vertebrae so first of all we will see the typical lumbar vertebrae so if you see the typical lumbar vertebrae it has got the body part it has got the vertebral canal it has got the pedicle this is the pedicle part this is its transverse process these two on posterior aspects are the lamina at the junction of the lamina this quadrangular shape is the spine this is the spine of the lumbar vertebra this is the superior articular process and this one is the inferior articular process so the parts of the typical lumbar vertebrae is body pedicle transverse process spine lamina vertebral canal superior as well as the inferior articular process now we will see the description of each part so if you see the body of a typical lumbar vertebrae this body it is kidney shape or the bean shape it is larger compared to the thoracic or the cervical vertebrae if you see the body it has got the superior surface it has got the inferior surface this superior as well as the inferior surface it lies in relation to the corresponding intervertebral disc while if you see the anteriorly this anterior surface it is sloping in nature and this lower uh, this uh, length of this anterior surface is large or it's, it is more compared to the posterior surface and which gives rise to the what anterior curvature of this lumbar vertebrae now between this superior border as well as the inferior border the remaining part is concave part further the posterior if you see the posterior surface of the body it has got two to three openings for the basal vertebral vein now if you see the vertebral canal it is triangular in nature and this cavity it is larger compared to the thoracic while it is smaller compared to the cervical the pedicle they are thick and strong and they are directed backward the superior surface as well as the inferior surface of the pedicle has got notch the superior vertebral notch is shallow compared to the inferior vertebral notch which is deeper so this inferior vertebral notch is deeper behind the pedicle posteriorly you have got the lamina which is short and broad and it completes the this vertebral arch posteriorly from the junction of the pedicle and this lamina on lateral side you have got the transverse process if you see the transverse process it is directed backward and laterally and it is tapering in nature this transverse process it is being contributed by the costal element while the if you see the posterior aspect there is a elevation of the tubercle over here which is known as the accessory tubercle and this accessory tubercle is the true transverse element which is there on the posterior inferior aspects of the this transverse process near its root from the junction of the pedicle and this lamina there is a superior articular process so if you see the superior articular process it has got this articular facet which is directed backward and medially and from its posterior surface this is thickened to form what is known as the mammillary process so posterior part of this superior articular process is thickened to form mammillary process from the junction of two lamina there is a spinous process this spinous process if you see it is quadrangular in shape and its posterior as well as the inferior margin is thicker compared to its superior margin it is directed straight backward now we'll see the atypical lumbar vertebra that is l5 so what is atypical about it now if you see this vertebra that is the atypical lumbar vertebra l5 
if you see the body part the body is largest amongst all the lumbar vertebra compared to other l1 and l4 l1 to l4 it is larger in shape it is more slopy towards anteriorly and which contributes to this uh, lumbosacral angle if you see the pedicle it is directed backward and laterally somewhat the lamina these are the lamina and from the junction of the lamina you have got the spine now the spine is short and it's pointed or rounded posteriorly this two are the super, superior articular process and this is the inferior articular process so superior articular process distance between the superior articular process as well as the inferior articular process is almost equal or sometimes the distance between two inferior articular processes is more the facet over the superior articular process is directed more posteriorly than the medially similarly the facet over the inferior articular process is directed more anteriorly compared to the other lumbar vertebrae so the transverse process is thick short and pyramidal in shape in case of the l5 lumbar vertebrae and it is if you see near its base it is it covers almost the whole of the pedicle as well as its encroach upon the body part so this is how the atypical lumbar vertebra looks now we'll see the attachment part so if you see the attachment part over the lumbar vertebrae this body the anterior border as well as this lower border of the anterior surface will provide attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament similarly over this area this posterior upper posterior border as well as the lower border will give attachment to the posterior longitudinal ligament lateral to this anterior longitudinal ligament this body will give the body of the L, l1 to l3 vertebra on the right side it will give attachment to the right crush of diaphragm while that of uh, uh, on left side the l1 and l2 will vertebra body will give attachment to the left crush of diaphragm the superior as well as the inferior surface of the body will give attachment to the intervertebral disc behind the line of the crura or the crust of the diaphragm the portion of this uh, lumbar vertebra it will give at origin to the psoas major muscle from the upper and the lower border this portion will give attachment to the psoas major muscle this constricted part of the body across this will transmit the lumbar vessels as well as the gray rami communication from the sympathetic chain which will pass deep to this arches now if you see the vertebral canal this triangular vertebral panel the as we know that the lower border of the l1 vertebra lies in relation to the lower lower part of the spinal cord so the conus medullaris lies in relation to the l1 lumbar vertebra while below it lies it lies in relation to the all the three layers of the meninges as well as the cauda equina part of the spinal cord if you see this vertebral arch this pedicle they are related above and below to the spinal nerves while this lamina will provide attachment to the ligamentum flavae the spine it will provide attachment to the several structures the posterior layer of the lumbar fascia is attached thoraco lumbar fascia is attached to the tip of this spine well it also gives attachment to the interspinous as well as the supraspinous ligament while well, it's on either side it is related to the multifidus in its deeper part while the erector spinae muscle in its the outer part and apart from this the interspinalis muscles are also there between the two spines if you see this transverse process this tra whole transverse process the tip of transverse process will give attachment the tip will give attachment to the middle layer of the thoracolumbar fascia 
medial and lateral arcuate ligament lies in relation to the anterior surface of the L1 lumbar vertebra while this tip of fifth uh, tra lumbar vertebra will give attachment to the iliolumbar ligament. There is a faint vertical ridge which lies in its anterior surface of this transverse process and it gives attachment to the anterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. Medial to it lies the psoas major muscle while lateral to it lies or it gives attachment to the quadratus lumborum muscle. So, this lateral part of this transverse process will give attachment to the quadratus lumborum muscle. In this posterior surface, it is related to the deep muscles of the back. The fibers of the longissimus thoracic is over here. This accessory process will give attachment to the medial intertransverse muscles, while upper and lower border this of this spine will provide attachment to the lateral intertransverse muscle. If you see this articular process. It permits some rotation as well as the flexion and the extension and the mammillary process gives attachment this mammillary process over here will give attachment to the multifidus muscle as well as the medial intertransverse muscle. As far as the ossification of this lumbar vertebra is concerned is each lumbar vertebra will arise from the or ossifies from the three primary center that is one for the body and two one for each lateral half of this vertebral arch. While secondary center is there one for the superior surface of this body, one for the inferior surface of this body, two for each transverse process, one for the spine and two for each mammillary process. So, total seven secondary centers are there. Now we will see the applied part of the lumbar vertebrae. So, the developmental malformation in relation to lumbar vertebrae is common, many deformities are there and which will contribute to the backache as well as the uh, neural pain in because of it. Now, this fifth lumbar vertebrae which we have seen, sometimes there is a sacralization of this fifth lumbar vertebrae as its transverse process may get fused on one or both the side with that of through the sacrum which lies below and because of this it will compress on the fifth lumbar uh, now which comes out of over here and give rise to the pain. Another common comp uh, deformity which lies in relation is the failure of the fusion of these two lamina on the back side. So, each neural half, this neural half, it fails to fuse leaving a gap in the midline on the back and this condition is called as the spina bifida. The meninges as well as the spinal cord which lies in the this vertebral canal may come out of it and depending on the uh, type of uh, this uh, deformity, the different names are given. If only this uh, failure of fusion of this uh, lamina is uh, or the neural arch over the posterior aspect is there, then the condition is known as the spina bifida occulta. But if there is a protrusion of meninges outside this and producing a swelling over here, cystic swelling over here because of the CSF, then it is called as the meningocele. So, spina bifida along with meningocele. If the, there is a protrusion of the spinal cord also along with this cyst, then it is known as the meningomyelocele. If the central canal of the spinal cord is gets exposed in the herniated part and, and it's, it becomes dilated, then the condition is called the syringomyelocele. And Sometimes even the spinal cord is open posteriorly, the condition is known as the myelocele. So, this is how the different uh, terminologies are used depending upon the stage of the deformity. Sometimes 
this greater part of this fifth lumbar vertebra this is the fifth lumbar vertebra so this uh, fifth lumbar vertebra it slips forward over the sacrum normally it is being prevented because of this articular processes specifically this inferior articular process but sometimes this inferior articular process fails to fuse with rest of this vertebra and in that case this body of the fifth uh, lumbar vertebra will protrude forward due to this anomaly and this uh, condition is known as the spondylolisthesis so it it will give rise to the back pain and the neural pain also also the pain of the sciatica may like pain occur even fracture dislocation can occur in any of this lumbar vertebrae and because of that the symptoms of that uh, may occur involvement of the uh, coda equina nerves may lead to the coda equina syndrome or similarly the other neural symptoms can occur because of this which includes the fracid paraplegia as well as the saddle shape anesthesia and sphincter disturbance in relation to the urinary as well as the uh, an anal region apart from this as we know that between these two lumbar vertebrae it, there lies a intervertebral disc now this intervertebral disc it may get prolapse in old age because the because of the degenerative process the surrounding annulus fibrosus part gets rupture and so the central jelly like nucleus pulposus will come out and generally it comes out over this posterior lateral margin from where this spinal nerves comes out so it will compress this spinal nerves and because of this the condition what is known as the prolapse intervertebral disc in case of lumbar vertebra it is common in relation to the l4 and l5 lumbar vertebrae and symptoms related to the uh, this are uh, like sciatica like uh, symptoms or the referred pain or the root pain can occur in relation to this which also involves the even uh, motor symptoms as well as the loss of power and reflex may occur the excessive curvature in relation to the lumbar spine is known as the lumbar lordosis so this is also a kind of a deformity in which there is a excessive lumbar curvature similarly the acute pain in relation to this lumbar vertebra is known as the acute lumbago and it is because of the any of such deformity or the spasm of the muscle and there could be a violent pain in relation to the lumbar spine so this is how the applied part of the lumbar vertebrae